Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we've done a couple of domestic things. Lately, we've been looking at concrete, watermelons and pumpkins and stuff like that. And this finally has a roof, by the way. Designed this on a live stream, a mix of mangrove logs, mangrove wood planks there, stripped mangrove above that, and then acacia and jungle wood to complete a little gradient there. I thought that was kind of nice. It started with a little bit of the red color from the inside of a watermelon and then I decided to just mix in a few colors that I figured would go with that. So that's over there, not really disguising the fact that it's a redstone contraption, but still enjoying the mix of colors and from the top it actually looks quite nice blending in with the roofs of this area. But today I want to do something a bit more adventurous. I want to go further afield and I want to complete our collection of armor trim templates because we have all these smithing templates sat around here in my house but we're not doing a great deal with them as of right now. In one of these chests, one of the precious materials, one's this one here, there it is, we've got a bunch of these. We've got all four of them from the trail ruins. I'm actually going to take all of these out and put them in in a barrel so we can observe all of them and see which ones are missing because I'm fairly certain I know which ones those are. So first of all we have the four from the trail ruins. We have Wayfinder, Shaper, Razor and Host. Then we've got the ones from the structures that you can just roll up and raid. We've got the Coast Armor Trim from Shipwrecks, the Eye Armor Trim from Strongholds, the Dune Armor Trim from the Desert Temple and we've got the Vex armor trim, of course, from the Woodland Mansion, the Sentry armor trim from the Pillager Outpost, the Tide armor trim you get from defeating an Elder Guardian, and occasionally they will drop the Tide armor trim template. We've got the Rib armor trim from Another Fortress, and the Ward armor trim from the Ancient City. We do, of course, also have the Netherite upgrade smithing template, but since we're looking at armor trims here, we're going to ignore this one. But of the structures I know have armor trims, I believe we are still missing four of them. The Ward Armor Trim has an even rarer counterpart in the Ancient Cities, which is the Silence Armor Trim, and I was unable to find that when we raided our first Ancient City that's a little bit further away from base. Fortunately, we do have another Ancient City below here, so I might save that for later in the video, and we'll go and raid another one of those and see if it has the Silence Armor Trim somewhere inside. But there are three others that I'm surprised we haven't got already because we have raided these structures before. Those are the Wild Armor Trim, which you can get from a Jungle Temple, the Snout Armor Trim that you get from a Piglin Bastion, and the Spire Armor Trim that you get from an End City. And with those three done, the Silence Trim should be the only one left, and if we can acquire that, we will have acquired every Armor Trim smithing template that's possible to acquire at this stage in the game. And then, of course, we can duplicate them with the amount of diamonds we have lying around, which is a considerable amount at this point. I would like to put each of these armor trims on basically every piece of armor throughout the series. Maybe not today, because that might involve a little bit of extra diamond mining, but I'll see what I can manage. And that way, we will have a browsable library of these armor trims that we can decide which one to use on which piece of armor anytime we want to create a new armor set. And you'd be surprised even though we're wearing netherite, about how often you'll want to create new sets of armor, because there are obviously other pieces of armor that we want to take into account, like the fact that I want to wear a gold piece of armor if I'm in the nether for longer periods of time and might be tangling with piglins. We might want a custom trimmed pair of leather boots in case we do a lot of stuff with powder snow, and of course if you want to specialize in a certain type of armor, if you want to have an armor set that has a full set of fire resistance enchantments, and the armor trim can actually help you spot at a distance which of your suits of armor is best suited for whatever tasks. So you could have the razor armor trim actually apply to your fire resistance armor and the blast resistant armor could have the shaper armor trim, for example. Either way, feels like it would be nice to complete the whole collection. And so after a little bit more trading, just so I can get some XP here and repair some of my damaged tools, we're going to head out in search of these four missing armor trim templates. And I think our first port of call should be the jungle, since the jungle temples will be the easiest of these structures both to locate and to raid. We've got one down here, and I'm fairly certain that we've covered jungle temples in this series before, but this is the third season of Survival Guide, and so I may just be thinking about when we've covered them in previous seasons. Now let's hop on into the entrance over here. And this will give us an idea if we've raided this one yet or not. No, there are no torches inside of here, so 
Maybe we haven't. Okay, well, if this is our first look at jungle temples, let me show you around a little bit. Jungle temples are split up into two areas, really. This entrance foyer sort of thing here, where there's some stairs up to an area which doesn't have a great deal else going on, but there is a secret here in the entrance which we can uncover by exploring the second level downstairs. On one side, either to the left or to the right, they can mirror each other, depending. You'll find this bank of levers right here, and this is a puzzle for you to solve with sticky pistons hidden inside the wall right here. What you want to do is go to the very outside lever, flick that, and then flick the inside lever, ignore the one in the center, and then flick this and flick the outside one again. So it's three, one, one, three is basically the order you want to do it. And if you step up here, you'll notice that that has retracted a block of the floor in the entrance foyer. And that has revealed an area where you can drop down to access a loot chest, which unfortunately for us doesn't really have a great deal of exciting stuff in it. And this is one of the places that you might expect to find that armor trim template, but you can also get a couple of sticky pistons in here, which is really good if you're playing on peaceful mode and don't have easy access to slime to craft your own sticky pistons. Opposite this bank of levers is a corridor, and in this corridor you have to be quite careful because there are tripwires laid across the ground that are quite difficult to see if you're just strolling on through here casually. But you'll notice a little thin hitbox just above the ground and a dispenser often covered in vines further down the corridor. If you step into the tripwires, those will fire arrows at you, which will just stick in the ground nearby, and this even happens if you break the tripwire manually like that. The one way of diffusing the situation is by bringing a set of shears with you, since shears can be used to break the string tripwire without triggering the trap, as I'll demonstrate on this second dispenser trap around the corner. Now the redstone dust here is kind of hiding in plain sight, so it should be fairly obvious once you round the corner that something else is going to trap you, plus the dispenser on this side is a little bit more visible up close. But in front of that we have a chest which does, in fact, have two wild armor trims in there, so that's fantastic. I'm so glad we were able to get that on our first jungle temple raid, and honestly, very surprised that we haven't encountered this sooner. And while the other loot in these jungle temples seems kind of lackluster, there is a chance for gold and even diamonds to generate in some of these, it's just that this jungle temple, for whatever reason, seems a little bit stingy. Either way, we got what we came here for, and with night falling outside, we're going to return to base, drop those off, and go looking for the next one. I think the next armor trim we'll go for will be the one in the piglin bastions. We want the snout armor trim, and I'm going to bring a bucket of lava to deal with the piglin brutes, also to check in on our dripstone farm, which is doing very, very well. They're always way cooler to see once they've developed a little bit. They always start off kind of lackluster and then look really neat by the end. So we'll come back here and we'll harvest the dripstone a little bit later. For now, we're going to head to the nether and we're going to locate a new piglin bastion since we completely raided the treasure bastion that we discovered in a previous episode. I think it's time to look further afield. I've got my gold helmet on so the piglins won't mess with me too much. I've got a bucket of lava to deal with the ones that will. And we're just going to fly out in a direction that I haven't really traveled all that much. We've got our nether fortress over here. This is the one that I encountered the first time we came to the nether, but aside from the blazes in here, which I think I'm probably just going to run away from, we have not really run into too much else further in this direction. So let's go past the nether fortress and see if there's a bastion beyond. And oh boy, it looks like there is. Okay, so what we have here is a housing units bastion, I believe, although... It could be a Hoglin Stables. Yeah, no, it is a Hoglin Stables. There are a lot of Hoglins generating in this structure. And you can see the Piglin Brutes patrolling on the ramparts. I see at least a couple up there, with some coming down the stairs on this side, and a couple walking around inside this central structure. So there are several chests on the outside and the inside of this one. I needed to check that there wasn't more lava coming down from the ceiling there for a second. But from the side here, we should be able to see that there will be a couple of chests in lower locations around here that we can track down and steal the contents from. I'm going to steal some netherrack from the local terrain first because we will need that to block off any of those chests from Piglin line of sight. And I guess we'll begin up here on top of the structure since that's probably the easiest way to get the drop on these Piglin Brutes. Let me see, if I drop on down here, can I get the attention of any of the Brutes who are patrolling this area with the chest? And second question, will they be able to get up and attack me. Well, we've met this guy now. Uh, it looks like he can't attack me, so I'm just going to pour a bucket of lava right there, and that should deal with him. All right, nothing too difficult so far. Just a regular piglin here on the ramparts, and there's another piglin brute around here somewhere, but I'm going to deal with this another way, which is to dig on down through here 
block myself in like so, and then we can take out this block in order to raid the chest. There we go. The piglins can't see me sneak anything out of here. We can get some gilded blackstone. I'm probably going to leave the rest of this unless it looks really valuable. But then we can just dig on through here until we reach the next chest, which should be underneath this piece of basalt and... There we go, we got a Fortune 1 pickaxe in there, but nothing in the way of armor trims. Okay, not to worry. Now the challenge is getting out of here without tangling in any piglin brutes once again, and it looks like we're in the clear. One of the other piglin brutes wandered off in this direction, but that seems to be fine for now because I'm not seeing too many other chests over there. We can quickly parkour over, and there is a chest right down here, so I'm going to block myself in with this real quick, make sure the piglin brutes can't follow me down this staircase, and this has a golden apple and some obsidian, but once again, no armor trim. Yeah, the piglin brute is down here on the staircase, and I would much rather take care of him than leave him walking around. So you know what? We're going to drop a bucket of lava here, and unfortunately, the rest of the piglins might be caught in the crossfire. Hopping on over to the other side, do we have another chest down here? We might do. Yes, looks like there is one here. We'll drop a couple of blocks around this one as well. And that's got another ancient debris, which is good for our overall collection. I'll take the block of gold as well, but we're farming bone blocks and the rest of that is junk. Got these ghasts floating around from the nearby soul sand valley as well. Just going to try and take them out. There we go. And we're probably going to use a similar strategy to deal with the hoglins in this hoglin stables bastion because there are a few more of those around and they can be really tricky, especially when there is so much lava nearby. <laughs> and oh my goodness, they've actually trapped a ghast in the center there. A ghast has spawned on that block and can't make its way out. That's actually kind a novel. I wish I had a name tag on me. That's basically going to act like a turret once we get down into the lower levels of this, and that could potentially destroy some chests, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh, there's our next Piglin Brute. Okay, block it off. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, we don't want that kind of smoke. Seems like that guy actually went down these stairs in order to try and find me. Well, it looks like our Piglins have made their way down here. I'm pretty sure the Piglin Brute is down here as well, and I spotted another chest down here in this area, so I'm going to carve away a bit more of the Bastion so that Oh, not the not the ghast in the middle, not the one I expected, but another one has flown out of the Soul Sand Valley nearby. And it sounds like the Piglin Brute is going to be just around this corner. Yep, there they are. Well, they shouldn't be able to get to me from this angle unless there's a different passage around that I didn't see that I missed. So I should just be able to pour a bucket of lava in there and let that do the rest. There we go. And pretty soon this ghast is going to notice me and start firing some fireballs. But in the meantime, I should be able to get to this chest here. We'll block off these piglins so that they don't come and attack me when I open this chest up. And unfortunately, we just got a little bit more junk in here. Well, if possible, we want to continue going further down the structure because as we descend into the... Yep, I think the ghast noticed me then, but no fireballs. Oh, yeah, no, there we go. There we go. Okay, it looks like I am going to have to take this ghast out after all. But as you get down towards the bottom of this rampart section here, this staircase should lead down to an open room which has a loot chest in it. And I'll need something in order to block off the doorway here just to make sure I don't get any unwanted piglin interference. And I believe there's a piglin brute in the room below me, so that's another bucket of lava should deal with them. Okay, yeah, here's what I'm talking about. Down here at the base of the structure, I'm fairly certain nothing has spotted me up until this point, but we should probably block this off just in case. Right here we have another loot chest with another piece of ancient debris, and there is sometimes a double chest here, but it looks like in this case we just got a single chest. Oh well. Now you might be thinking this is pretty bad luck so far because we ran into the wild armor trim in the jungle temple pretty much immediately, but because because there are chances for so many chests to spawn in structures like this, in Piglin Bastion Remnants, then the chance of an armor trim appearing in each of these chests is actually relatively low. I expect, like the jungle temples, we'd be given a much easier chance of getting an armor trim from these structures if there were only a couple of chests in here, but there are many chests in a piglin bastion, and dangerous though it is, it is worth exploring for these rare rewards. For example, I believe this hoglin is actually guarding a treasure room over on this side, so I'm gonna throw down some lava over here to make sure that this one gets cooked. We're gonna bridge over to this side, and I believe somewhere over here, yes, I spotted a chest. Now, is this one that we've gathered already? It shouldn't be, I don't think, but I'm hearing a piglin brute somewhere, so we better be quick. Oh, diamond pickaxe and some crying obsidian, but 
Unfortunately, once again, no armor trim. When you're searching for loot inside a piglin bastion, it's often a good idea to search for the rooms with the lanterns, even though the walls are all broken out and it's kind of a maze in here, you can often find loot chests and other goodies in rooms that have lanterns nearby. And at this point, I'm sorry to say, it seems like we may have raided the entire structure. I'm not seeing too many other locations where we might find chests, but I'll check this lowest level just in case there's some stuff down here because there's still a few gold blocks we have missed. But nope, unfortunately, it looks like that is all we'll manage to get from this bastion. So I'm going to have to go looking for another, but not before I sneak into their vault room and steal all of their gold. <laughs> ah, we love a good heist. Still, on to the next bastion. Oh, this is another big foreboding treasure bastion. It looks like I think we need to go in on this one, although we do need to go in carefully because I have absolutely no idea where I am in the nether right now. I can take the coordinates and all, but if I were to end up losing my stuff here, it would be very difficult for me to find my way back. But after disposing of like three or four piglin brutes in this one room, we are at least getting closer to our first chest. Let's grab the loot from up here, shall we? Oh, we got a netherite upgrade from this, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, not the smithing template we were looking for. Mending diamond pickaxe as well, might as well take that. Getting a tidy collection of diamond pickaxes at this point, and this treasure bastion is surely going to provide at least one more of those. Now we've got a chest on this side as well, we have two chests in fact, and just one piglin standing between me and them, so I guess that piglin probably has to go. <laughs> and this one's got a bunch of gilded blackstone, a snout banner pattern, but not a snout armor trim. This one's got a pig step music disc, but... Once again, sadly, no armor trim. At this point, I'm considering bringing out a shulker box and packing up some of this loot so that I can store it more safely. But remember, anytime you break a shulker box, any piglins in the vicinity are going to get mad at you. I'm also going to refresh my fireworks while I'm here since I'm running a little bit low on the stack I had in my inventory and we can continue exploring. Moving on down the ramparts, I'd say the bridge here is our next port of call. And if we can lure some of the piglin brutes out into this area, that'd be a good idea. Oh, one of them got a hit on me there. That was rough. Okay, let's get into position and let's see if we can lava these fools. And once we're inside of here, we want to pay close attention to any alcoves which might have chests in. There might be some opposite us, so it is worth bridging around with the blocks that we got. Surely this guy's not going to mind if I just uh, put a wall between me and him and take some treasure. Oh, he had a friend. He had a friend. Don't mind me, bud. Just committing a little bit of theft. Just casually, not to worry. Nothing really worth it in that chest anyway. And I hear a brute down there, so he's best taken out as well. But that seems to be it for chests around the outside. There might be one a little bit lower down, but the main thing I'm concerned about is heading down towards the central treasure room and avoiding any piglin brute interference before I do. And in this case, we're just going to wall ourselves in quickly with the chest here and see if the chest has anything worthwhile for us. And it does have another netherite upgrade template and some more diamond gear, but once again, we are left without the armor trim. Oh, this is so disappointing. But from what I've been reading, it is a less than 10% chance that the armor trim appears in a loot chest in one of these bastions. So while we should have gotten lucky by this point, it is not too surprising that we haven't. And hey, at least we have the coordinates of another treasure bastion just in case we need to do anything with that magma cube spawner later on. But for now, once again, we are left moving on to our third piglin bastion. And not too long after, we found a great example of a bridge bastion. This is at 1807-448, so worth checking out if you're using this world seed. And sometimes you'll find these in a slightly better state of repair where the front of the bastion actually looks like a piglin's face with kind of paws or claws to either side and that is the intention behind these things. They are actually meant to look kind of monolithic even though they are crumbling down in a state of disrepair with all of the basalt ruins everywhere. And so these actually have a chance at some unique loot, which is not necessarily the armor trim that we're looking for, but these bastions can have a chance to produce a lodestone as part of the chest loot. And since players can only craft lodestones if they have a netherite ingot to craft one with, it is quite valuable to acquire them from these ruins. So we're going to explore this area. I'm just going to make sure it's safe against any piglin brutes dropping in on me. And then we're going going to start dropping lava in on them. Okay, lots of regular piglins around, but the brutes have been taken care of. Let's make ourselves a little safe tunnel here and go looking in these treasure chests. And that one has given us what we wanted. At long last, we have the snout armor trim. Well, third time was the charm indeed, folks. We've even got an extra ancient debris in there and a couple of other goodies if we wanted them, but I think I'm going to leave those there. I'm happy just having gotten at least one snout armor trim, although I'm going to check this other chest while we're here, just in case it has a second. And it does not. It has a bunch of gilded blackstone, which I'll definitely take, and a full block of iron if we wanted that, <laughs> but we're farming that, so no worries there. It may be worth returning to this bastion in future so that we can try and get hold of a low 
lodestone without having to craft one, but we've got enough ancient debris that we'll be able to craft one ourselves with that, so I think we're going to call it there. We'll return to this one another time, and for now we need to make our way home and start planning for an end city raid. Hey folks, welcome back. This is actually Pixel Riffs from the future. I'm recording this segment after I've recorded all of the other segments of this video, and I'm currently in the process of editing it, but at some point in the process of recording all of this stuff, it seems like some of my footage has gone missing. Or maybe it was never recorded in the first place, because I went out to the end and raided a couple of end cities, but when I went to assemble the footage for this episode, it simply wasn't there. Any footage I'd got from the end just didn't exist. Can't find it on my hard drive, and I don't know whether my file system has just eaten it, or if I never pressed record properly to begin with. But unfortunately that means the actual footage of me finding the Spire armor trim was lost. So I've gone back out to the end, and I'm going to attempt to explain to you what I did, Really, it's no different to a standard end city raid, except we got lucky and found an armor trim, but I had a couple of other tips that I want to explain to you folks while we're out here. But in my original session, the first thing I did was come out to what I was calling the Twin Cities, these two end cities that we found facing each other with the ships pointed towards each other in the previous end city raiding episode. And I went through these pretty thoroughly. I decided to go through and get a bunch more shulker boxes since it was going to be worthwhile to do that. And there are still a couple of shulkers left around here since they reproduce themselves quite frequently whenever you raid one of these structures. But since we've got all of the loot from these, it's not going to be that useful for me to just show you where I took the loot from. So we're going to fly out and try and find another end city that I can raid as a demonstration, which is what I actually had to do because after raiding both of those cities thoroughly, I did not find the Spire armor trim. It wasn't in any of the chests in either of those cities, and there were maybe 10 chests in total if you count all of the locations that you can get loot from in an end city. So I needed to go out and find another one anyway, and luckily I found a couple. And now just by flying west from the location of that second of the Twin Cities, we've found another one, and this is a completely untouched city. Looks like we've got another boat here with the dragon's head on the prow, which means I haven't gone in here and gotten the elytra, so we might as well go through and raid. And obviously, this ship is one of the first places players think of coming to when they want to raid an end city for loot. We're going to open this up, we're going to have a couple of emeralds and some diamond gear and stuff in here, which is kind of nice. We're going to grab the elytra from here, obviously. And most of the time when I think of looting these places, I think of the shulkers as the real loot, since shulker boxes are just so useful for gameplay. But of course, if you're looking for other types of loot, end cities have plenty of it, and that's where we need to look in order to search for armor trim. When you're raiding one of these structures, aside from the ship, the two places you want to look for for loot chests are the tops of these towers where that square section is above a large cylindrical base and often that is twice as tall as this one. This is one of the shorter ones. You can find the ones that are double tall and filled with twice as many shulkers. And the other ones are these three layer sections where you'll mostly find that the arms terminate in a two layer or even one layer little buildings like that. The three layer ones are the ones where you'll find an additional loot chest and an ender chest. And one of the things that's worth knowing if you don't want to go in and fight the shulkers, if your shield is low on durability like mine is right now, or if you just don't need the shulker boxes and so you don't want the hassle, you can simply fly up to the third level of this, go around the back of the building opposite where the entrance is, dig out these two blocks, and you can grab the ender chest from there so you can open that and interact with anything you've already got stashed in there, and you can open up this chest where there's a few diamonds inside and a couple of quite useful looking diamond tools, although the shovel does have a curse on it. The shulkers inside of here won't really have line of sight to you since the opening you've created is so small and is covered up by these blocks, and even if they can see you, they won't be able to shoot you through this narrow of a gap, so it is completely safe to raid this module of the end city like this and you'll usually come away with some decent loot without any hassle. Naturally, it only really makes sense to do this with elytra or if you're a really good aim with your ender pearls. The other place to come for loot is of course the top of this tower right here where inevitably you're going to attract the attention of a couple of shulkers but in here we're going to find some iron and we're going to find a little bit of diamond and gold stuff but this little opening at the top not only allows you to escape but if you've got elytra and you want to fly down onto the tower and raid it quickly before leaving then you can just drop in here and not have to deal with all of the shulkers in the cylinder down below. And that is, in a nutshell, how I found the Spire armor trim that you'll see me have at the end of this episode.
episode along with a bunch of other gear. I simply flew around for a while until I found one of these end cities, dipped down into here to pick up the chests, and then fought my way back down the towers, getting all of the shulker boxes as I went. But while it's obviously a shame to miss my original reaction to finding the spire armor trim, the overall process wasn't all that different to the end city raids we've done before, so you didn't miss a whole lot in terms of gameplay. And finally, when I returned to the overworld after that process, aside from the spire armor trim, this is all of the equipment that I ended up with from raiding the end cities. We got a bunch more diamonds, iron, gold, and a ton of diamond gear. Plus 38 shulker boxes, which after this last little raid, I'm happy to round up to 40. Anyway, with the spire armor trim found, the next port of call was going to be an ancient city, and we happened to have an ancient city right on our doorstep from day one, so that is the next place that my search took me. Because the final challenge lies directly beneath our feet, my friends. We are headed down to the ancient city, and I'm not going to bring too much stuff. Obviously, I'm going to bring the usual set of gear. I do need to make sure I have my Silk Touch hoe on me so that I can grab a bunch of the Skulk stuff that is down here. And we're going to bring a couple of stacks of wool so we can navigate around without the fear of alerting the Warden. Let's go with Lime Green. I think Lime Green is going to stand out in this one. And considering we used four stacks of wool on the last one, this time I'm going to bring five. The only way I know down to the entrance to this ancient city is actually down here through the layers of this abandoned mine shaft, where distantly we saw the deep dark biome a while ago and if we are not too careful we could end up alerting some shriekers before we even land so yep let's let's take a look at this ancient city and let's find the best way in i guess we can start over here by this tower and it should still be relatively safe for me to fly over there considering that there is not too much shrieker activity around here so we'll hop on down, and once again, any of these chests have the potential for an armor trim, including the silence armor trim, which is what we are looking for. The ward armor trim will be nice, but we are here for silence. And I guess I'll grab a shulker box as well, just so we can package up any other loot that we find, as long as it is safe for us to do so. I'm going to leave the compass there. The compass isn't all that special. But as we explore here, I'm going to take a note of where some of the shriekers are, and honestly, if they're not interfering with me collecting loot, I'm going to leave them be, because there are advantages to being able to spawn the ward later in the game. One other thing that we didn't get to spot in our previous Ancient City raid, though, is that occasionally these pillars will have skulls on them, where we've got a couple of loose mob heads. I'm going to pick those up. I like having the ability to use some mob heads for aesthetic builds later on, so we're going to grab those. And now that we have Swift Sneak, we're actually going to be proceeding around this Ancient City a lot faster, which is a really good thing. Got one Skulk Shrieker over here. Looks like there aren't too many others around the outside, so I should just be able to switch in my my netherite hoe and take this one out. Yep, no other shriekers around. Perfect. Shouldn't be any more when we open this. And we get another hoe for our efforts along with a bunch of other loot in here. Very close by, we have another pair of shriekers. I think we'll probably need to block off this one first and then break the other one, considering that if we broke that one, this one was going to get alerted through the side of a block no matter what. And it looks like there was another one behind the wall that I didn't spot. Okay, strike one then. Yeah, that one was right down here as well. That's so sneaky. All right, we can take that one out though and we should be able to raid the chest in this room, which nets us a few more books and music disc fragments. Each of these shrieker traps is basically like a little mini puzzle, and it's kind of satisfying being able to resolve some of these puzzles, especially when there are so many others around like this. <laughs> oh my gosh. In this case, I think isolating the shriekers and removing them one by one is going to be the smartest thing to do. Let's grab this. That alerted the sensor because it was at a diagonal, but those are okay. And now we can take out that one and nothing. Perfect. Now let's open up this. Tragically, the loot chest doesn't have anything much useful for us, but I'm going to grab all of this stuff anyway and throw down my shelter since I know it's safe in here. Amusingly enough, this ancient city has a lava pool directly under the ice room. <laughs> That's kind of poor planning on their part. We'll grab the shrieker from here so that we can get down into the ice room and see if there's anything worth having down here. Looks like there was another Shrieker in the room below. Well, we can't really do a whole lot about that, can we? Oh, good, there are two of them. That's another diffusal scenario. Oh, that sounds like Strike 3 to me. Always in this game with the Shriekers behind the walls. I'm not even sure which one that was. It might have been that one there. But either way, I think I can sneak away from this one now. In fact, there's a lot of lava here in this city. But I presume I have loaded this area frequently enough, being right next to my base, that anything that was going to burn in the lava already has. And this is another tricky one where we've got a chest right next to a Shrieker. But I think we should be able to take this out. And now we can open 
open the chest. Just a bunch of coal again. Honestly, this ancient city is pretty determined to give me coal for Christmas this year. I don't know what it is. At the central portal frame, we have a chest which is going to contain a single golden apple. And I believe if we eat this golden apple, that's actually what the skulk sensor below is looking for. There we go to open up that secret door. But I don't believe there are any chests in that area. And what we're here for is the loot. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. Took out one shrieker. We should be able to open up this chest. We got a lead, some mending diamond pants and a couple of other bits that I'm just going to leave in here. Around any of these altars with the two chests on either side, your safest bet is to check behind for any shriekers and just block off the chests with wool on three corners. And we got two swift sneak three books for our trouble in that one, along with a couple of pairs of leggings to put those on. And that one gave us the ward armor trim. And appropriately enough, it also gave us the warden. There he is. Okay, time to go. Let's see if we get anything from this chest quickly while we have the opportunity. Nope, just a couple more skulk sensors and I'm not in their good books right now. <laughs> Let's get a reasonable distance from the warden and pillar up. I don't hear it sniffing for me, so I'm pretty sure I'm out of range and we can observe it from a distance until it goes away. That's why I always bring my spyglass to these things. Oh, look at him. Look at him, adorable little guy. Still very happy not to be the target of adorable little guy's attentions right now. Unfortunately, this ancient city doesn't have a lot of other biomes nearby. The deep dark is pretty much surrounding this place, so he's not going to get distracted by bats or other mobs in this area. He's just going to wander around for a little while and despawn after a minute or two. Yep, there he goes, digging back down into the ground and disappearing <laughs> in a kind of an awkward way, but then it always looks that way when they're not on solid ground. So we have an armor trim, but not the armor trim from this place. Hopefully we should end up with a couple more loot chests that we can investigate, like this one over here. One more shrieker to disable, one more chest to check, and a lot of enchanted books once again, but nothing in the way of armor trims. At this stage, it is looking unlikely that we're going to find the armor trim at all in this city, but it's worth checking every chest we possibly can. Pausing only to admire the iconography because this is clearly an altar to the warden. It's got like the little ears on either side with the walls. I really like that. There's so many good design touches in ancient cities. But we do have a whole back half of the city that we haven't raided, including a pretty intact tower with a chest on a pedestal in the center. <laughs> Sadly, nothing in there worth talking about. A geode hanging from the ceiling. And I always find geodes down here in the deep dark. Maybe it's just the elevation and the fact that this whole area got cleared out so it exposed a lot of stuff in the surrounding terrain, but I feel like geodes are quite frequent down here. So far, this city is huge, so it has that going for it. What it has not been is productive. At least it has not produced the stuff that I want. There's two chests on either side of this area, a lot of shriekers around, but I think of this as the jacuzzi room, so let's see if they've left anything in their lockers. Well, a Fortune 2 book is nice, but once again, we're going to be tangling with the warden in a second. Swift sneaking off to a safe distance once again. We're going to peel her up and make sure he goes away. Oh, maybe he's going for a swim. <laughs> maybe he's got his trunks on and he's ready for a dip in the pool. And off he goes, digging back down into the skulk. Well, I'll need to be a little bit more careful around that area for now. But we didn't get anything useful on this side of the room. How about on this side? Let's try blocking off this chest. Let's make sure there aren't any shriekers nearby. We'll block off the back half just in case. And... Yep, nothing in there really to speak of either. Okay, in this one, at least we have two enchanted golden apples, which seems like a bit of a consolation prize at this point, because I'm fairly certain we are close to wrapping up our exploration of this city, and tragically, it has not provided me with the new armor trim. I may still have missed a chest here and there, so there's a possibility that we could encounter something if we come back through here another time, but honestly, I think I've done a pretty thorough sweep of the area. So, with the warden gone, I think it is probably time for us to look for for another ancient city. But it's good to know that this one underneath my home mountain is here. Now I'm gonna get out of here before I trip any more shriekers. <laughs> And after two more ancient cities explored, I have finally found the silence trim. And right now it is being guarded by the warden. I tried to place a torch over there just so we could see a little better for the video and ended up tripping a shrieker in the next room. So regrettably, the warden is currently standing guard over probably the rarest treasure of these ancient cities. And I'm going to have to back away by a few blocks here just to make sure he doesn't sniff me out. But there he goes. He's off down into the deep dark again. And I can come down from my wool safety pillar to get back to the chest because this chest right here incredibly contains the silence armor trim and i'm so happy we have finally found that next to a mending book of all things as well what an absolute joy to find this in a chest and there's some very very good leggings around so i might actually swap those for the curse of binding ones that i had in here and since the rooms are right here and i noticed these as i was pillaring over to escape the warden i am just going to make sure we have checked these chests here this one here has a few skulk blocks in and a few other bits 
bits and pieces, nothing major. And this one's probably going to trip a few Skulk Shriekers if I open it like this. But once again, oh, we got a very, very stacked hoe in that, actually. That's a really, really good one. And if it's safe to open that chest, it's probably safe to put down and open this shulker box. So we're going to throw everything from that in here so that we can grab the last few items from this chest. I'm going to grab the other side music disc as well, and we're going to return to base because we have obtained our objective here and... I can finally put together all of the armor trims. And what an excellent place this was to find an ancient city, because it turns out this was actually underneath the alien mountain in the savannah biome that I showed you in a previous episode. This amazing mountain, with all of its incredible dripstone pits and everything, had at the bottom of it a deep dark biome, which of course, with this mountain being over the top of it couldn't help but lead down to an ancient city. We flew on straight down into the ancient city on my live stream. We explored the entire thing and then finally we stumbled upon that chest with the silence armor trim and I immediately closed down the world. I was like, right, we're going to come back to this on the video and I ended up playing some Minecraft bingo for the other hour and a half. But the other place I discovered an ancient city was actually underneath this mountain, which you may remember as the mountain we've set up our frog spawning platforms on. The one that has the little crater behind here with a little bit of jungle foliage in and the calcite vein that we mined out a while ago. Yes, underneath this mountain, because of course it is a very tall mountain, there is deep dark and an ancient city that I had to tunnel through to in order to find in the first place, but we were able to find it successfully. And so back here at the base, you'll find that I've added a few shulker boxes around this barrel where we had the armor trims, and we've now added the snout and spire armor trim in there as well, along with the two wild armor trims. I put that one over there just because it was a spare. And at the back here, we have the three shulker boxes of loot that we brought back from that ancient city raiding session, including the silence armor trim here. So we can finally add that to our now complete collection of smithing templates. In this shulker here, we have all of the stuff that we got from the Piglin Bastion. In this shulker here, we have all of the stuff that we got from the end, all kind of neatly arranged now. And in each of these, slightly more chaotically arranged. We got a couple more ward armor trim templates. We got a couple more enchantments apples, a few more other side discs, and echo shards and whatnot, but of course the main prize is the silence armor trim here. And now my task is to spend as many diamonds as I have on creating duplicates of all of these, because I think it's going to be a good idea to have a display of all of the different armor trims on every piece of armor. Now we're going to start off just going every piece of iron armor, let's say, because I want to see the helmet, the chest plate, the leggings, and the boots. And iron is the kind of resource that we're not going to miss a handful of it if we end up making a ton of of iron chest plates out of it because we're going to need to make 16 to cover all of the different armor trim designs and I think iron is going to be the material on which the trim design will stand out the most. It's fairly plain, you know, it's kind of grey and white so I think it's a good canvas for displaying all of these armor trims and seeing how the details change. So I've got a bit of work to do because I need to spend a lot of time duplicating these. We probably need to mine a bunch of diamonds so that we have enough to duplicate each of these templates four times and I need to find a place where I can fit 16 suits of armor. Although I do have 16 of these barrels on each row of this. So what if we had the suits of armor on top of each of these barrels? Wouldn't that be cool to have basically our entire storage system lined with the different armor trims, maybe in different colors or in different armor materials or something like that? It could take a while, but it'd be a fun decoration for this area. Maybe we can think of that as a long-term goal, but hey, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Let's get all of these armor trims duplicated before we start discussing ideas like that. Well, folks, it has taken literally every diamond I had, or more or less. I mean, we've got like a few diamonds left in this item filter, but I had to use every diamond that was in the chest. I don't have any here in this barrel. I have broken down every piece of diamond ore I ever acquired, and we now have enough armor trims. I had to make five of each of these because, of course, we're going to use four of them, but we want to keep a master copy, especially when it comes to the rarer templates that we don't want to just disappear once we have used them. And so I now have at least five of each one of these smithing templates. I accidentally made an extra ward armor trim, and the Vex armor trim, we had so many from Raiding the Woodland Mansion, I already had eight of them anyway. But now I have 16 armor stands, 
plans which we are going to arrange so that I can put together all of these different armor trims on armor stands but it's going to take such a mammoth effort to do that and I want to choose materials that are right for each of these which in some cases means I'm actually getting netherite scrap. <laughs> I'm actually going to apply netherite trim to the snout armor trim because I think that's probably the one where it makes the most sense thematically speaking but all of that is going to be a lot of effort and we've already put so much time and effort into exploring all of the structures in this video that I think we're going to leave this episode there and we'll do a full armor trim showcase in the next episode but folks thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft survival guide my name has been Pixel Riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon take care bye for now